Artificial Intelligence This is a big topic with, I think, lots of confusion and lots of fuzzy language. And my job today is to make it a little more confusing and a little fuzzier. The terms used so loosely today to refer to all kinds of software programs. And I'm not sure that, for example, a software program that's able to convert my face into someone else's on the screen is really AI in any meaningful sense of the term, any more than, say, a 3D printer is AI. It's really just following instructions it's been given by us, following an algorithm with which it's been programmed. If I program this software to make me look like George Clooney, incidentally, uh, although it might be fun and gimmicky to do that here, I'm not about to learn how to do that for a six minute YouTube video. But if I were to program it to make me look like George Clooney, that's what it will do or what it will try to do. It won't decide instead that I should look like Bill Murray. Although, if I flood it with images of Bill Murray and label them George Clooney, might it not just do just that? The point is that it depends on input from me. Garbage in, garbage out. I'm not sure I fully understand what this means, but I know it's claimed that an algorithm can learn. So if it does manage to turn my face into that of George Clooney, it might at some point access other images of George which correct or refine the image that it's projected onto my face. I'm sure it can also take into account other factors, such as whether George is wearing glasses, or, or has facial hair, or his appearance at different ages. I suppose, as input, we might have to specify other things, such as George Clooney in his 30s, or George Clooney without facial hair. I'm not sure how it would know what version of George Clooney to use without this additional input. Maybe it asks us, the user. I'm not sure. But that would make sense. Really, that's no different from if we were to ask a human artist to draw a portrait of George Clooney. They may well ask us, at what age? And so on. So, this software can potentially learn. It can ask us questions for additional input, I assume. And it can search the web and online resources for additional information. Does this make it intelligent? That's clearly a difficult question and is as much a philosophical question, also perhaps a question of definition, as it is in any way a, a scientific question. Let's first of all just consider the verbal forms of AI, things such as chat, GPT, and similar programs. Let's first of all recognize that this is first and foremost software. It requires input in order to generate output. It obeys its programming. Some might argue that this is just as true of us. Again, this is a philosophical question. However, I think some things can be claimed categorically. I don't think a program such as ChatGPT understands what it's saying. Again, I suppose that could also be said of me as I'm chatting away here. I guess if the software were good enough, I might indeed be an AI-generated image and you wouldn't necessarily know. Let's not get into the details of the Turing test here. But let me explain what I mean. When we, we humans, talk, we're not just stringing together sounds which have a relationship to each other or, or words on a page that have a relationship to each other. This is just what we mean by such things as grammar and syntax. This is the internal logic of language. But in addition to this, we're relating these sounds or these words to objects in the external world. When we use the word leg, we have a construct in our mind that we can apply to a multitude of real world examples. If we're sighted, these are visual images. If we're not sighted, these images may relate more to touch. Now, ChatGPT, as far as I'm aware, simply understands the way words relate to each other. It understands this internal logic of language. It doesn't really understand what these objects refer to in the outside world. At least, I don't think it does. But things become a bit more complicated when some visual input is added to this, as is the case with many of the more or less humanoid robots that currently exist, such as Amica and 
Sophia, these robots have visual as well as audio input. So when Amica talks about a dog, for instance, she, it, has access not only to all the images of dogs online, but it can also see any dog in its visual field. It can associate the word dog with those images, but also with the real life object. As far as I'm aware, these robots, robots are not yet able to input data from touch, smell and taste, although this is surely within reach. Are we now close to what we mean by intelligence or more particularly perhaps understanding, which I would see as a hallmark of intelligence? It seems to me that a robot that is able to see, hear, touch and smell an actual dog is much closer to actually understanding what a dog is than one which just knows the word dog and how that may relate to other words in a sentence, or even one that's able to access just images of dogs online. Now, I think it's important to distinguish something called intelligence from something called personality. By personality, I mean the enduring characteristics and behavior that comprise a person's unique adjustment to life, including major traits, interests, drives, values, self-concept, abilities, and emotional patterns, which is a definition from the American Psychological Association. I think we would agree that this is something distinct from, and to a large extent, independent of any measurable intelligence. Dogs, for instance, and other animals, clearly have distinct personalities based on the above definition. So, our humanoid robot might be intelligent, or at least its behavior may match the behavior of what we regard as an intelligent agent, but it might not have any distinct personality. I suppose it could be programmed to express such a thing though. But let's suppose that our robot has chemical sensors that imitate what we call taste. Would it be able not just to express, but to actually have a preference for chocolate ice cream over vanilla ice cream. It could be programmed to have such a preference or at least to express such a preference. For example, it could be programmed to make a random choice when faced with such a test. Or it could be programmed to choose what is statistically the most popular option. Or maybe the least popular if we want to make our robot a little more edgy. But why should it even have such a preference? We have a preference one way or the other because of physiological responses, as well as perhaps memories that cause us to associate one option with happiness more than the other. I suppose our robot could have the latter, but that already presupposes that it can have happy memories. In other words, an emotional response to past events which are stored in its database. As far as the former is concerned, the physiological reaction the robot simply doesn't have one, so its expression of any such preference might be regarded with scepticism, if not suspicion. The robot can taste chocolate or arsenic without any reason to prefer the taste of one rather than the other. The former generates no positive physiological response, and the latter causes it no harm. But all this is really just to say that it's a robot, not a human being an inorganic, possibly intelligent entity, rather than an organic, possibly intelligent entity. In fact, ice cream and arsenic are completely irrelevant to our robot. Perhaps we should be considering other things instead. Some things might enhance its performance and others might hinder it. Isn't it reasonable to suppose that our robot might come to show a preference for situations that enhance its performance and avoidance of those which hinder it? If it has heat sensors, for example, some level of heat might be associated with optimal performance. But if the ambient temperature strays too far in either direction from this optimal heat level, might not our robot experience some concern or perhaps even an analog of fear? and exhibit behaviours that seek to rectify the situation. Or perhaps our robot can be solar charged, in which case it might show a preference for sunny days rather than cloudy days. This, this will produce within it some analogue of pleasure, 
because it results in optimal functioning. The point is, if it's going to develop preferences, it will develop them about things that are important to it, rather than to either chocolate or vanilla ice cream, which are completely irrelevant to its functioning. This would just be an imitation of human behaviour. We're still some way from our robot developing its own particular personality. We would expect these preferences to, to apply to all instances of this particular model of robot, not just to our particular robot. But perhaps this is where experience and learning can come in. Over time, we might expect differences to develop between our robots as they have different experiences, learn different things and encounter different phenomena. Over time, we might come to see differences in personality. After all, isn't that what also happens to us, even if we're a twin and have the same basic hardware and software as our sibling? But then, even if your robot seems to be intelligent and seems to have a unique personality, you may still have that nagging doubt that somehow it's not real. It's really just all programming. It's just a clever imitation. Well, I'm sorry, but that could be true of you too, from my perspective, maybe even of me. Ultimately, you know, if it walks like a duck, etc.